from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So would you have chosen to be in that room all together in one place when Pentecost happened? Fire and wind and divided tongues and everyone was filled with the Holy Spirit speaking in a variety of languages. Chaos. And it happened in the room when they were all together in one place. Chaos in church. Typically, people like to feel church is sanctuary, or at least under control. And this scene just does not sound under control at all. On this day, when we celebrate the birthday of the church, it can be easy to get nostalgic for the church we think we grew up in, rather than the chaos that we hear described in this passage in Acts. I had a friend in high school. Her name was Nancy. She was a senior when I was a freshman. I knew her from church, and she was always really friendly when she saw me in the halls or in the band room. It's awesome to have somebody older than you be really friendly to you when you're new to the school. Anyway, Nancy was kind of a granola person before we use that term. Natural and healthy and interested in the environment and organic vegetables while the rest of us were excited about the new McDonald's coming into town. She was the middle child of five kids and their family was always present at church. In fact, between my family and her family, you could guarantee one of us would be the last ones in the coffee hour room as our parents talked to everybody. About 10 years later, her parents retired and announced they were moving to the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, some eight hours away. The now grown kids came home for one last Christmas in the house they grew up in, one last church Christmas Eve service. And our family was all home too, and and we waited at the door as they were coming out. And Nancy said, oh good, I was hoping you would be here because, well, we'll never see you again, and I wanted to say goodbye. And we all went, you don't say that. No, there must be some way that we'll see you again. There must be some way. We don't want to grieve. We're here in the middle of a candlelight service. That's what we came there for. But Nancy just always kept it real, even when it wasn't comfortable. This past week, I saw her post on Facebook, and it really moved me. She said, I wish I learned this in Sunday school, or high school, or college. I'm glad I know it now. And then she shared this Andrea Balt poem. Your weirdness will make you stronger. Your dark side will keep you whole. Your vulnerability will connect you to the suffering of our world. Your creativity will set you free. There is nothing wrong with you. I love that she said, I wish I learned this in Sunday school. How awesome it could be if all churches become places where we learn that God loves differences. How wonderful if church could be where we understand that what people call weirdness is about being who we are and deciding to be that even if it means we don't fit in. 
honoring the image of God in us. We were not created to be cookie-cutter versions of ourselves. Weirdness can be the strength for the long-view vision of life. Creativity can set us free. And what if we learn in church that we have emotional lives that are not always sunny? This is a message that needs to come from somewhere. Why not church? As the place where it's safe to be ourselves, to acknowledge what's real, even if it's painful, and to recognize empathy as the ultimate in necessary components of a successful human being. Not money or title or power, but empathy and vulnerability as traits of a person whose life is truly successful. In the days of not so long ago, I remember learning Bible stories that taught me who God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit were. I remember learning stories that helped me navigate life in the world, taught me larger truths, and I am eternally grateful for that Christian education foundation. But also back then, church did have a lot of trying to be perfect and being afraid to fail. It's why people used to have such an easy time dismissing church people as hypocrites when they failed to live up to the perfection standards. We don't advertise that anymore. The church of today says characters welcome. The church of today has the spirit blowing us in a new direction, not away from trying to be a good person, but without the masks that keep other people out, without the denial that life is harder than it looks on the surface. In the church of today, we learn to be followers of Jesus in a way that doesn't deny what is, but recognizes the hope within any given moment. Yesterday, during the royal wedding, A gospel choir sang, Stand By Me, and a gospel sermon was passionately preached, and afterwards the Archbishop of Canterbury was asked about the unconventional nature of the service. And basically he said, there's nothing conventional about Christianity. The love of Jesus Christ isn't conventional. It's transforming. It's life-changing. It changes the world. So, of course, the service was unconventional. That's actually what makes it Christian. Are we ready to be the church of today? The chaotic, go in one direction, and then the other, listen to the breath and acknowledge the chaos and embrace it. It's here, ready or not. The good news is God's spirit blows wind and fire into the middle of what is and helps us find our way to the new day. In Jesus' name, amen.